Supreme Team looks forward to doing your taxes this upcoming season. Give us a call at 706 507 1040. Come visit us at 2450 Winton Road, Columbus, Georgia 31906. Or visit us on Facebook at SupremeFastTax.com slash Facebook. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. How are everybody doing today? Okay. Good, good. We're going to get ready to start our daily Bible study. Uh, it's 12 o'clock. We're going to get ready to get started right on time, right on schedule. And we shall uh, hear what thus says the Lord for our life. Amen? Amen. That's the most important thing. What God says for our life. And what we've been talking about for, I know, at least two days. I think it's our fourth day talking about it. But it's the, what, what our subject has been is complete the mission. That's what we've been talking about, completing the mission. How do we complete the mission? How do we, how do we, uh, uh, the most important thing, the most important thing we can do is complete the mission. We can't get halfway there and stop. We can't say, well, I want to do this, want to do that, but we've got to. Work it out to the very end. Amen? Amen. All right, now, what that means is, is uh, we have to make sure that when we're, uh, uh, it, as I look at what we're doing right here, right, uh, it's amazing how even this little what we're doing, how it's taking us all the way over here, all the way over there, and God has shown me that's what I mean by completing the mission. Don't come off this particular study until you've completed the cycle. So we're going to, even though, even though as we study the cycle, it's taking us here and it's taking us there, it's doing this and it's doing that, we're going to stay with what God has given us to study until we finish that thing. So we're going to go to our, our, our base scripture for this study, which is uh, Galatians chapter 5, all right, verse number 7, okay? Let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse number 7, yeah, that's right, let me write down our first verse for the day, all right? You said 5 and 11? 7. seven. Verses five, uh, chapter 5, verse number 7. Okay? okay. Chapter 5, verse number 7. Now, uh, brother, you got to write that down. Okay? Get a pen and paper. I ask you to please write that down. Write that down. Make sure you spell everything correctly because I am going to return these back. And, and they should have every scripture. should be Every book in this should be spelled correctly because you went to the table of contents and you actually yeah. looked at it. Make sure that it was there. It's it right here. It's something right here by this thing. I think it's a paper inside that closet right there. Okay. All right. So again, complete the mission. All right. Now, what we have to do is look at chapter five, verses seven through nine. Okay. Now, let us say a word of prayer before we begin to read that scripture. Let us let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we love you. We ask you now that this Bible study go forth just as you designed it from the beginning of time. We trust your word to be true. Give us the knowledge and understanding that we need to complete your mission. This is not our mission, so truly we don't understand what you're doing. We don't understand why you're doing it. We don't understand how you're going to do it. We don't know when you're going to do it. But we realize, Lord God, if we stay the course, that you're going to work this mission till it's completion. And just give us the, the knowledge to know, the wisdom to know, Lord God, that you are the most important thing, and your mission is our most important call in our life. So we ask you now, as humble as we know how, to bless us to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Galatians chapter 5, verses 7 through 9. And it reads, You were running well. Who prevented you from obeying the truth? Yes. Such persuasions does not come from the ones who call you. A little yeast leavings the whole batch of dough. A little yeast leavings the whole batch of dough. In my Bible it says, which is the King James, a little leaven, leaven is the, a little leaven is the whole lump. In other words, in other words, what, what, we can take that yeast and turn it, we can replace that thing with something that we put this side, the ingredients to make the whole bread, and say sin. A little sin put sin in the whole, the whole bread is messed up now. You know, we just went... Wait, but it was but a little sin. Well, guess what? You sinful. <laughs> you 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 you're sinful. I didn't do it, but one time, guess what? You did it. Now, does that mean that you can't have salvation? No, that's why Jesus died for us. He's married to the backslider. So the re what that's saying is what what that's really saying is you need God to clean you up. You can't clean yourself up. So when you find you're in a position where I've done all I know how to do, but I can't get myself out of this position, that's what God wants you at. 
He's, he, he strategically placed you in that position where now you have to call on him to get to the next level. Amen? Amen. So a little level is level the whole lump. Amen. And we again, I want to take everybody, I want to ask everybody to, if they would be so kind as to purchase a book of mine. Uh, it's available uh, in our bookstore. It's available online. Order a, uh, order a copy of the book, What Must We Do to Be Saved that I wrote. And today... That's uh, your book? Yeah. Uh -huh. And today... Oh, I didn't know that. Amen. Today, I'm coming straight out of that book again. So far, the last few days, we've been coming out of the book, and I'm going to continue to come straight out of the book. Now, every day, we, we take some excerpts from the book and study from So everything we talk about is in the book. But today, we're going to go straight from the book again. This is be our fourth day coming straight from the book. And we, have, we were talking about the fruits of the Spirit. All right, so let's turn to chapter 5. As we had chapter 5, go down to verse number 19, uh, Somebody read, start reading at verse number 19. Just read them all, the fruits of the Spirit, then we'll go back and talk about it a little bit. So, so, so we should have Galatians 5, 7 through 9 written down. Then the next thing we should have is Galatians uh, chapter 5, uh, verses 19, all the way down to 22. 19 to 22. Uh, somebody pick that up and, and read that. Now the me. works of the flesh are obvious fornication, impurity, um, lasciviousness, adultery, sorcery, um, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, deci what, decisions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, great. So we see, she uh, just pointed out some of the things that she gave it from, uh, what version of the Bible is that? Uh, New Revised. New Revised Version. I'm coming from the King James, so a couple of words that I use may be a little differently, but they're going to be, it's going to all come to the same thing. So I'm going to go back to, I don't know, if you could go follow me with the words that you use and get down to this word so we can get the same word. Okay, the first word in, the thing, uh, of, in 22 says adultery. I see those words. So just go word by word with me so you'll know when they replaced it with another word. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, and adultery. So the fifth word in, in uh, verse number 19, I think it is. The fifth word. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, it may say emulation. Wait, mine says... Mine says idolatry. Idolatry. Yeah, idolatry. Okay, uncleanness. Lasciviousness, idolatry. Yeah, that's what we are, idolatry. That's the word we're finna talking about today. Idolatry. Now, in, in your own words, somebody tell me what does what is an idol? Y'all see, see the reason I can say this is we've all seen that show, American Idol. So uh well, give me what an idol is in your own words. What is an idol? An idol is a person that it's like you worship them and you wow. know, you're like, wow, on, that's, it's that person. Good. Because you're worshiping them. Idol. Yes, Lord. I, was, I love that. Good. Anybody else? Anybody else want to talk about what is an idol? Okay. Great. She, she said an uh, idol is a person, but I want you to know something. Idol, you can also idol a, can a thing. Things. Yeah. Right. So you idolize your car. You idolize anything. You know, you can idolize, uh, man, anything that you put before God, you idolize it. So you should only, God should be the one thing that you're striving to serve for. That's what you do all that's unto the Lord. So anything that you do that's not, that you're not doing for God and, and, and that you're not doing it, using God as your reason for doing it, you're idolizing. Okay? Everybody want everybody to say that word, idolatry. Say that. Idolatry. Come on, sister, say it. Idolatry. Idolatry. Okay, good. Okay. All right. First Samuel. The next thing we want to write down is 1 Samuel, uh, chapter 15. Write that down first. 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 15. Everybody should have that spelled correctly because it's right in your Bible. 1 Samuel, chapter 15. Okay. And we're going to start from verse number... Uh, let me see. First Samuel, what That's now? the Old Testament. Okay, when we're looking at we're looking at words for idolatry, it can be called a healer in the Hebrew. It can be used as a healer, okay? So let's look at it in 1 Samuel chapter 15. Okay, go to 1 Samuel chapter 15. Okay. 
we're gonna we're gonna start reading from verse number. We're gonna do some reading today. Let's go from verse number ten. Start reading from verse number ten. So somebody, please pick up reading. Verse number 10. Somebody was trying to assist Selena. I think she's done all the reading this morning. So, the first seven to 15. And I guess if no one else wants to read, I'll, I'll go ahead and read. But is, is anyone else? Okay, we're still looking for it. Let's work forward. together. Look at the table of contents. Go to your table of contents and look up the first Samuel. We'll go forward what we'll page this on. Then when you get the first Samuel, you go to uh, chapter 15, and then you chapter get verse number 10. Make sure you get the first Samuel, okay? And then go to, go, to, go, to, go to chapter 15, all right? And then verse number 10, okay? You want me to read it? No, no, no. Right. Okay, we ready? It's so important that when we read this stuff, that we all read it together, because you, because, because God is gonna be speaking something to you different than what He's speaking to me. Okay, so, so read, read it right with me as I read it. First Samuel, chapter fifteen, and I'm gonna start reading from verse number ten. Okay. And it says, "Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king." For he is turned back from following me. Y'all see that? And hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel. And he cried unto the Lord. How long? All night. All night long. Have you ever cried before the Lord all night long? About And now look, look what he cried about. One thing I want to point out before we go any further. He's not crying to God about his problem. He cried for somebody else. Just imagine that. We always so concerned about ourselves and what we going through. Samuel was going through something too. But he said, look, God is not always all about me. If, what about my brother? I, I'm going to go to you. Look how long he's going to go to him for his brother. All night long. Sometimes we get mad at people. We don't even talk to him. You know? but, 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 but all night long he cried for him. And, said, and when Samuel rose early in to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place, and is gone about, and passed on, and gone down to Gilgal. Amen? Amen. Now, we're going to go back and read that. First of all, it says, the word, the, then came the word of the Lord unto who? Back in verse 10. Then came the word of the Lord unto who? Samuel. Samuel. In other words, God spoke directly to Samuel. So, I want y'all to know, the same God that spoke to Samuel speaks to you. Just as clear as what Samuel was able to hear and tell us what he heard, God speaks to you with the same clarity. So you should be able to say what you heard God say with the same precision that we hear what we're reading what God told Samuel. In other words, open your ears because God is speaking to you. God, that little voice you hear to have you. See, right now we go through things and it's sometimes it's a little painful. And what it is is God is changing us. I, I ask you, I beseech you. Do not, everybody say do not. Do not. Do not give up. Remember we're talking about completing the mission? When God begins to speak to you, that's not, and he begins to change you, that's not the time to give up. Matter of fact, check this out. When God begins to change you, the pain that you feel, you've been praying for it anyway. In other words, let me see if I can make this any plain. When I pray to God to help me with my finances, okay, I said, God, I need your help. He takes my job. That don't make no sense. Wait a minute. He said, now you understand the only source of income is me. He takes care of me, but now I lost my job. I'm depending on God, and he
and he take my job. Now, I'm not saying that's what he does. That's not how he operates. Mm -hmm. But he could. He has power to do that. But as he takes your job, if we don't quit, now see, if we quit, then we'll be out here walking homeless saying, God took my job from me. But if we stick with it and stay with the mission, we'll understand that the God we serve has our best interest in, our, in mind. See, God is good all the time. I want to say, I want to say, God is good all the time. And then y'all say what? All the time. I'm going to say, God is good. And y'all say, all the time. Okay? All the time. And then I'm going to say, all the time. Y'all say, God is good. So I'm going to say, God is good. All the time. Come on, baby. Well, we can all. Come on, baby. We got to get this. We, I want to get us in one spirit. If we don't get in one spirit, we're going to be going separate ways. So let's try this again. God is good. God, God is good. No, you all say, all the time. All the time. All the time. Right? God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Let's try that one more time. Because see, right now, somebody going through something, and they don't understand, why is God treating me like this? And then not only that, when you get to a point, you say, I don't have to put up with that no more. I'm beyond that. But we get to the point, we say, we don't, this person don't know who I am. I'm going to have to reintroduce myself to them because they don't understand who I am. So, see, what it is is God is changing you. You're hearing new voices, and if you're not careful, you'll take this invitation and say, I'm going to quit. I don't care. I'm, I give up on this God stuff anyway. I don't need God. I can do this my way. Amen. Then you're going to go right back to where you were. Amen. Huh? See, because God is speaking directly to you, the question is, do you hear him? That's the question. If you hear him, then now it gives you an opportunity to do what Samuel did, listen to him. Okay, so I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say God is good. I want you to say all the time. I want to say all the time. I want you to say God is good, okay? God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. See, right now we ought to start feeling better. Because, see, God taking us through some things. And, it's, and if we misinterpret it, we can take it as punishment. But, you know, uh, because I know that you are a mother, uh, Sister Celine, you and I know this about you. No matter what, no matter. I'm not asking. I'm not going to ask you this question, but I'm going to tell you this answer. Every time you punish your kids, it's for their own good. Even if it something, then sometimes it might even hurt you to to to, 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 to take something from them or tell them no or, or try to direct them. They might be mad at you, but they don't know that it hurts you even worse to have to do it. But that's how God feels. God says, you know what? I love my child so much that I'm going to take this from them. And when I take it from them, they, it's a possibility they can get upset. And it's a possibility they can not complete the mission. Because, see, we, all, we I talked about it a couple of days ago. We all have a free will. And the free will is, are we going to choose to serve God or are we not going to choose? That's our free will. That's the only thing. God is going to give us those choices. Are you going to serve me or are you not going to serve me? See, because the problem comes, if you say, God, I'll serve you. You, now, that's it. now it's he directing your path. You're not in charge anymore. See? That's, a, that's a big price to pay when we think we know everything. Because now we got to understand we don't know everything no more. Now we understand somebody know more than me. Now we understand I've got to, be, I've got to follow. Huh? Now we understand that. Once we say, I have decided, as for me and my house, remember I think that we talked about that too. As for me and my house, and you got complete control over your house, I'm going to serve the Lord. Once we make that decision, now we head into a direction that God has us to go. Amen? If I understand what I'm saying Amen. so far. Okay, I want you to stay with me. Okay, now, next thing. Let me go on. That was 10, 11, and 12. Let's go to 13. And Samuel, come with me now, y'all stay with me. Now, verse number 13. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Bless be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Wait, y'all hear what I said? Mm -hmm. The reason y'all didn't catch that because you weren't really listening. Let's go back for a second. Please stay with me. Let's go read number 11. Who is talking in verse 11? I'm not going to move to somebody tell me who is talking in verse 11. God. God. Thank you, sister. Thank you. God is speaking. Let me tell you what God said. This is what Samuel heard God say to his ear. This is the God that speaks to your ear. He says, look, it repented me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he had turned back from following me and have not performed my commandments. Y'all saw that? Mm -hmm. Now, move down to what I just read. What, verse number 13. Who is talking right there? God. No, no, read No, Samuel to Samuel. Saul. Samuel. 
huh? Samuel. God had told Saul something, right? That he was talking about Samuel. Now, man, I want y'all to see. Come here, brother. I got, I got, I got, we got we gotta illustrate this. This is too valuable. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up here. Brother. Okay, now. All right. Um, I saw Brother Joe rob the bank, right? With my eyes. And I got pictures. I got everything, all the evidence. And I show you. I said, look, brother. Brother, who I just say? Whatever I said his name was. Joe robbed the bank. He go to pictures. He go all the evidence. He go his fingerprints. He go everything. I'm telling you that, right? But I just told you. Now, you walk out the way. Now, walk over there and come back. Now, come back this way. Now, I turn from the person. I turn from Minister Lane. When you turn your back, now I'm Joe. Now I'm Joe. Put, I told you, Minister Lane told you that Joe robbed the bank, right? Now, you come back, and now I'm Joe. And I tell you, Joe, guess what, man? I didn't rob the bank. They said that I robbed the bank. You see, now, he saw the proof already. Mm -hmm. But I'm coming and telling him something different than what the proof said. He, I saw the fingerprints. I saw the pictures. I saw all the evidence saying that I saw the video camera. I saw you coming out the bank. Minister Lane showed me all that proof. But now Joe, the person who did it, yeah. said that he didn't do it. So you got to make a choice. Who you going to believe? I saw with my own eyes. I saw Joe coming out the bank. I know he got the money. Matter of fact, he just bought a car. He got all his money in his pocket. He's doing all the stuff that a bank robber would do. All the evidence is there. But Joe's confession is that he didn't rob the bank. So now, you're in a dilemma. Joe is my friend. But the proof says that he robbed the bank. And Joe is saying that he didn't rob the bank. Y'all see what I'm saying? That's what he's saying to you. Now let's give him a hand as he sit back down. I hope everybody see that. Amen. Amen. Now, Joe. really what we're talking about has nothing to do with Joe yeah. or the bank. What we're talking about is God has said that Saul has not, has, that Samuel has not, wait, says, oh, it repeated me. I have set Saul up to be king. Uh, and Saul has stopped following God. Amen? Okay. Okay, now, in 13, and Samuel came to Saul. Are you with me? And look what Saul said. What did Saul say to him? May you be blessed by the Lord. Go ahead. I carried out the command of the Lord. Then did God, what did God say? God said he did not carry out my command. And so he's lying. So he's lying. Now, Saul is in a dilemma, the same dilemma that you are in, Samuel is in a dilemma that who is he going to listen to? Is he going to listen to God or is he going to listen to the person that God told him about? You see? Mm -hmm. So we, that's what we are. We have to listen to are we going to listen to God or are we going to go back to look into things, the situation that we've been working out that way anyway. I've been doing it this way all my life and it's been working this way it got me at so far. So I'm going to go back to this. Guess where you're going to end up? Right back where you were. Same predicament. Same predicament. So unless you get some higher advice, Unless someone gives you something that you have not heard, you'll go back and do the very same thing. And even if somebody gives you something that you have not heard, if you don't heed to that warning, you're going to go back and do the same thing. Now, listen to this. And Samuel said, what meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? In other words, what do you mean you didn't steal that money? You go to camera. I see the film, your fingerprints. That go the money that mark the mark bills on the bank. But you telling me you didn't steal the money? That's what that said. Cause he, he said, I hear the sheep. You saying you didn't do it? Now I hear the stuff. You are supposed to have killed all that stuff. I hear it. Mm -hmm. How you gonna tell me? God told me you didn't do it. I hear the sheep. I said, Wait a minute, uh, uh, Saul. And look, look. And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites. Oh no, man. That money that you see me with, my grandmother gave it to me. I got it from my grandmother. See, I see how it started to get twisted. Mm -hmm. He telling him he got it from somewhere else. He didn't get it from somewhere else. He got it from the he, he got it from the stolen, really. Okay, mm -hmm. the Amalekite. But he still trying sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Now, then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay. And I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me this night. And he said unto him, say also. Now, 
he's so bold as to say, look, man, the police told me that you got the money, okay? Now, I'm, if you don't mind, I'm going to show you proof that, that, that they showed. Now, I got proof over here. They left everything with me. I'm going to show you. And he's so bold. said, no, nah, yeah, just go ahead. Show me what you're talking about. I'm going to prove that they wrong. In other words, sometimes God will give a direct word to you, and somebody will try to rob you of that word, and then they'll be ready to prove God wrong. But here is the idea. Listen to God. Because once you stop listening to God, you have left the mission. You cannot complete the mission if you stop listening to God. So listen to God. That's where you got your message. So listen to what he said. He said right here. And Samuel said, When thou was little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king of Israel? In other words, that man Joe, man, I remember about four years ago, you was homeless. You didn't have no money. You didn't, you, you didn't have nothing. Your family had left you. And didn't God bless you with a job? And then you said, uh, if God, you know, didn't God give you all of this stuff? That's because you was your friend for a long time. So you went back and talked about, look, man, we grew up together, Joe. Because you trying to get him to say, look, Joe, now, now, don't lie to me. You know, sometimes sometimes when you when you catch somebody to lie, you don't want to just tell them you're lying to them. Because really, you want to stay friends with them, really. I mean, you got to stay The objective is, I want this to be my friend. So I don't want to just come up and say, you lying, you lying. No, you lying. Don't just, I mean, look, man, come on. Man. And we've been together for a long time. Yeah, don't you remember when we, we used to be kids and all that stuff, man? You know, and don't, don't just go at them as if you lying. Because now, baby, God has sent you. See, God told, sent, sent, prepared Saul for this conversation. And God speaks words to you that you need to minister to people. See, you don't understand. When people do stuff against you, God has prepared you for that. In other words, when somebody come up and, 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 and say, uh, curse you out, right? And you're like, man, that ain't right. But you used to curse people out. Or you've dealt with somebody cursing you out. This ain't your first time that you've ever been cursed out before. In other words, God has prepared you for that. Whenever somebody comes against you, whatever they're coming against you to do, God has already given you how to handle it. So what you got to do is you got to go back and handle it the way God has spoken in your ear. Amen? Amen. Okay, and it says, And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. In other words, I know, because we used to go to Sunday school together, that you knew better than to steal anything, period. Don't you remember uh, Sister Johnson used to teach us in Sunday school that thou shalt not steal? You know, so you know better than stealing. You shouldn't. I'm not saying you robbed the bank. You know, don't, I'm not saying you lying, Joe. But look, do you remember we learned a long time ago that thou shalt not steal? Because you want to get a place of, you want to touch their heart. You want to compel them. To tell the truth. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to come against me. And it says right here. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekite. See, he's lying again, man. He said, God already told him he didn't do it. See, that's what we got to be careful with. Don't let nobody pull you out of something that God to put you into. Don't let people talk you out of stuff that God has given you. Because people will talk you out of it. I'm telling you, they're trying to get this Jesus out of you as quick as possible. As quick as you can get some Jesus in you, somebody trying to pull it out of you. Because they understand if that Jesus start living and grow roots in you, something's going to happen. But the people, everybody say but. But. Whenever you see the word but, that means everything, like if we were going this way, and you say but, now we're going that way. So he said, but the people took of the spoil sheep and oxen the chief of things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gaza. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt oil offerings and sacrifices as in, the, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, this here, this is something I want you to remember. To obey is better than sacrifice. In other words, he said, that we were going to do one thing with it instead of what God said to do. And we were going to do what we always do instead of what this new word that God has given us. You, we got to go with God say. Don't go with your tradition. It says to be obedient is better than to follow how mama them used to do it. 
to be obedient, when God gives you a new way to handle your finances, when God gives you a new way to handle your relationship, when God gives you a new routine to follow every day, it's so better to obey those new words, fresh words that you hear from the Lord than to just continue in the way you've always been, in business as usual. Amen? Amen. And to hearken than the fat of ram, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and that's what I want to hear, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. In other words, when you act stubborn, we talk about, see, you really, we look at idolatry as being, did everybody just see what I just said? It says, what did it say? Because, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. When you act as stubborn, what, somebody tell me what stubborn means. Anybody? What is stubborn? Make sure we know what stubborn means. In your own words. I mean, you don't got to be saying what the Bible says. In your own words, what does being stubborn mean? Stubborn is when you know that you should do something the right way, and you decide you ain't going to do it no way. Yeah, because no, no, no. Even when somebody's standing in front of you telling you you got all of what you need to do right, but you just ain't going to do right. You're not. You done agreed you're going to do right. You done got halfway there. To me, it's somebody that get halfway there and just stop. Yeah. It's just for no reason. You know. It just won't comply, but we're going to stop right there today. Amen. We're going to get ready to pray. And, but uh, at verse number 23, so we can mark it at 23, we're going to pick up right there on Monday. Everybody say Monday. Monday. I hope to see you I hope to see you Monday because I'm going to need you. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to get in a position where I won't need you every day. So people uh, people uh, get that perception about me that, that, oh, he'll be just fine without me. Yo, pastor, the man of God will not be just fine if you're not there. If you're not there, you are missed. Well, anytime you're out of place, you are missed. Matter of fact, when you're out of place, you didn't complete the mission. That's what we're talking about, complete the mission. And that's what we're going to get ready to pray, that, that, that God help us to complete the mission. Because I'm telling you, complete the mission is the most important thing. To obey is better than sacrifice. Amen? Amen. 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 So let us get ready to pray. We're going to be dismissed. And I pray to God, to the living God, that I see everybody on Monday. We can take it from place. Let us, let us, let us pray to God. Dear Lord, we thank you and love you. We ask you now to bless us, Lord God. We need to hear a fresh word from you. We trust your word to be true and everything else a lie. Lord God, we ask you now to have your way on this Bible study. Let your word get into our hearts and our minds and grow, Lord God, and do what you call it to do. We need you, Lord God, more than anything else in the world. We need you. Hello, how you doing? This is G.I. Joe, the evangelist. Thank you for watching New Way to Live TV show on YouTube. Brother doing big things, station show doing big things. But we need your help. Why don't you partner up like $100 a month to help this nice station stay on the air. And send your donation to the address on the screen. Thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Peace and love. God bless.